Is this video gonna get demonetized? A Christian sex toy store? Warmly caress your right knee under the covers at night. <laughs> and I don't know how there is a £136 <laughs> sex course for single women when Girl Defines Rule for Single Women is don't have sex. Hello lovely people, my name is Emma. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. You ever have one of those friends who gets into their first real long-term relationship and suddenly they're throwing around unsolicited advice like they're the world's leading expert on sex and relationships? Welcome to Girl Defined. <laughs> if you've managed to get to this point without knowing who Girl Defined are, you've lived a better life than I. Girl Defined is made up of two sisters, evangelical Christians. I've never I've read one of their books, I've watched a lot of their videos, I've never, or if I have then I've forgotten, I don't think I've ever encountered what specific denomination they are, I guess it doesn't matter. You know the phenomena where evangelical women run their own businesses, preaching to other women that they shouldn't run their own businesses or preach? That's girl defined. They started off with a blog all about helping Christian women live their best Christian women lives, they have morphed into, forgive me the term, it's an emotional term, I don't know how to get around it, a money-grubbing empire of evangelical nonsense just for women. Just for girls, specifically. One of the major things they talk about is marriage, relationships, sex, although the extent to which we can call that advice is, uh, in my opinion, quite limited. Bethany Beal of Girl Defined, she's married, she has children, now that she has those things she believes she is the world's leading expert on having a happy, fulfilling life. If you want to understand Girl Defined better, I really recommend watching mine and Savvy's videos on their book because they talk about their childhood and how they grew up and it really just explains so much. I think if they could read their own book with fresh eyes, they might understand some things a lot better, is all I'm saying. Excuse my voice, I'm still a little bit coldy and I'm doing... I've got a musical theatre showcase in two weeks and I'm doing a seasonal gig which involves uh, repeating scripts and talking to children over and over again all day, most days. So I'm threatening to lose my voice. I'm just about holding on, but I am getting a bit croaky, so apologies for that. On the other hand, I'm feeling very festive right now. What better way to celebrate the festive season than sex courses with Bethany Beale from Girl Defined. <laughs> you know what the sexiest thing of all is? Good skincare. Good segue, me! Today's video is sponsored by Geology. The other day I was at my musical theatre class and we were saying goodbye to one of our teachers, Cry. Everyone decided it would be lovely to have a group photo and I hadn't bothered to put on any makeup that day. So I was like, oh, good. But actually, I was surprisingly fine with how my face looked in the photo. Without a doubt, a big reason for that is down to having a good skincare routine, thanks to Geology. Also hydrating. Stay hydrated, kids. Geology is a 26 times award-winning skin, hair and body company. The reason Geology is so effective is because it is personalised skincare. I took their really simple little quiz and they assigned me Regime 20 for my skin. My favourite thing about Geology is how simple and clear everything is. You get a magical little card that says every single ingredient, it tells you what the active ingredients are and how they work just the science, simple and easy to understand, and then you get this gorgeously simple routine to follow. I have my morning routine, my nighttime routine, it says exactly what to use, in what order. Not only that, but the products, this is my morning cream, which even I could just about figure out is meant to be for the morning, but as you can see, the items are numbered, so I know this is uh, step three and four, which means something else comes first. Oh, number one, which is my face cleanser. It makes it so, so easy. If you get any extra products, so I have the performance moisturizer and the sunscreen, you get another card which says exactly what your active ingredients are, how to use it and when. These are all vegan, cruelty-free and dermatologically tested. Your girl loves animals, I just sponsored a chimp. Through the Jane Goodall Foundation, not like an AA thing. ZZ the rescue chimp has been sober for three months, guys. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done, ZZ. What are we doing? Skincare. Because it is personalised, Geology can help you target whatever your personal skin issue is. For me, I have um, acne issues and acne scars. 
and dark under eyes. It can also help you reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, have smoother hydrated skin and target signs of aging. It's so so easy with Geology, you take this 30 second diagnostic quiz, the dermatology team will come up with a routine just for you and it is shipped to your door. So easy. Right now Geology is hooking you up with a pretty insane offer. Use my code EMMATHORN70 or scan the QR code on screen to get 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. On top of that, you can get 50% off of add-on products of your choice when you add them to your trial. In real terms, that means you are getting over $49 worth of products for $15. It is so worth it. Thank you so much for listening and to Geology for sponsoring this video. So Bethany Beale on her website has not one, but two sex courses not just sex courses, the ultimate sexuality mentor course. There's one for married couples, or marrieds, as it's written here. I had to look it up just to double check because I've never heard marrieds as a word before. It is a real term. I've just never heard anyone say married or marrieds to refer to couples. I've only ever heard married couples. But it is a real word and worth 12 points in the Scrabble dictionary. So we've learned something today at least. She's got a sex course for married women and a sex course for single women and i don't know how there is a 136 pound <laughs> sex course for single women when girl defines rule for single women is don't have sex bethany like other orthodox religious people of this mindset have this distinction of single and married when of course you can be neither of those. I'm neither of those. I'm in a relationship, but I'm not married. Which in a weird way kind of suggests that Girl Defined equate relationships with sex. I learned about this nightmare through some shorts that Bethany released, so let's just watch them so you're up to speed on where I am. What the hell are my headphones? They're down here on the floor, of course. This is an ad, a YouTube short for Bethany's sex course for single women. Single women are sexual beings and they deserve help and hope and answers to their own questions and for direction on how to live their lives well in this season of singleness as a Christian. And that I don't like they, they this is how Girl Defined talk about that they always use this term, season of singleness. The type of Christian women that they are, they believe that the younger you get married, the better. But of course you've got to marry a, a good enough Christian man. But like the idea that your single season could be like 30 years long. Just season feels like the wrong word for me. I don't know, I don't like it. It's like a teasingly little little snippet of, of niceness where they say that single women are sexual beings. Yeah, they are. But you're the one saying they're not allowed to have sex or masturbate. They they deserve hope and blah, blah, blah. Is that, what, what does that mean practically? I guess we have to pay £136 to find out. That is why I have brought together doctors and therapists and authors and just godly women for the ultimate sex mentorship course for That is so telling. Okay, so again, if you want to dive deep into Girl Defined, I'll leave some links in the description for you. I've done a couple videos on them. We looked at a podcast once where they interviewed an expert and basically their expert was a biblical woman, a very Christian orthodox woman that they know who had a lot of homophobic opinions and had written a book. And that was it. We determined quite quickly that she actually did not have any expertise in the field that she supposedly was there to talk about. So I have no faith, pardon the pun, in Bethany Beale's ability to collect experts, right? They're, they're experts from an extremely biased perspective. So they will have the same orthodox Christian values, of course, because that's, you know, girl defined wouldn't gather any experts. This shouldn't be a surprise to us, but for anybody who maybe didn't know anything about them, it's important to be aware that their experts are extremely, extremely biased. And the fact that she was like, doctors and experts and just godly women. It's like, right, that, that's the main thing, isn't it? It's like, it's mostly their friends, people they know who share the same religious values that they do, which is don't have sex until you're married basically, which I feel like you could sum up a lot quicker than like an eight week course or whatever the fuck it is. For single women, we're talking about everything from God's amazing design for sex and intimacy to personal struggles. Like if you have an addiction. God's amazing design for sex and intimacy. Do you think they're going to talk about the clitoris?
to personal struggles like if you have an addiction with porn masturbation erotica um dealing with shame and guilt and really first of all i know from previous videos and uh having seen and read so many of girl defined's opinions on things girl defined and their you know similar content creators similar authors etc their definition of addiction is so so far from what the actual definition of addiction is basically if you watch porn sometimes girl defined would say you're addicted if you masturbate occasionally girl defined would say you have a masturbation addiction it is not when they describe it it is so far from because an addiction is genuinely a really serious thing that people require help with that i i, I for some reason, when this comes up, I always think of this. I don't even know what TV show it is, but I remember there was uh, a young man in a TV show that did have an addiction to masturbating and he would have to like pull over his car when he was driving places because it was such a terrible addiction, right? That's an addiction. Watching porn sometimes and getting yourself off sometimes is not an addiction, but Girl Defined will present it as, it, as if it is, which then leads into the whole guilt and shame thing. Where is the guilt and shame coming from? Oh, it's from Bethany Beale's values. If women are feeling guilt and shame over having sexual thoughts and feelings, it is only because that is what people like Girl Defined teach. You shouldn't have sex before you're married. You shouldn't masturbate, blah, blah, blah. So if you're feeling those things, if you want to do those things, you're going to feel guilt and shame. Whose fault is that, Bethany? I'm not saying it's exclusively Bethany's fault, but she is a part of the problem just looking ahead to the future about marriage and intimacy and the honeymoon and all of the questions that you have so i've noticed this i'm gonna keep taking these on and off like i don't know mickey mouse ears what that doesn't make sense it doesn't matter <laughs> i'm a little bit tired i've heard her say this before i've heard girl define talk about this before they they talk about the honeymoon whenever they talk about marriage and stuff and and sex all of the like questions from christian women it's always like, oh, what's the honeymoon going to be like? What is the the first night going to be like? And I find that a terrifying thought. Some people, maybe not even religious people, want to wait until their wedding night to have sex. That, I think, personally is a bad idea, but is completely up to them. But when the wedding night and the honeymoon are these big things that are built up. Like, how scary does that make it? Probably the reason people have questions, the reason people are afraid is because it's built up as this huge thing. It's like, you know, if you're if you're a single Christian woman and you're feeling these sexual feelings, the way to deal with that is to look forward to your eventual honeymoon when you can finally have sex. You might not know anything about it or what you're doing, so buy Girl Defined Sex Course instead of pursuing any other avenue that you want answers to but aren't exactly sure where to turn registration is officially open you can now register for the ultimate sex mentorship course for single women we are starting our first session on august 14th yes we are doing this live it's going to be two weeks together but you've got to register before then you want to be a part of this incredible community of women who are saying i'm not going to be ashamed of this i am not going to be awkward about this <laughs> it just ends I'm not going to be awkward about the video cut. <laughs> that was really weird. Uh, whatever. It's so bizarre because the idea, the, the way she's phrasing it, like, let's not be awkward talking about sex. Let's be open about this. Let's not be ashamed of feeling sexual feelings. That sounds brilliant. That sounds great. And yet, the things they actually teach. There's a couple more. They're, all, they're both like a minute long. In fact, they're exactly a minute long, which might explain why that one got abruptly cut off they've got some sort of automated editing system i don't know let's have a quick look at this next one sex questions that you wanted me to ask a sex expert and get answers to why are we wasting time not calling them a sex bird? you submitted these questions a while ago through an instagram is bethany okay here because i'm pretty sure she's not saying all of the words that she's trying to say you submitted these questions <laughs> Am I crazy? Is that you, happening? You submitted these questions a while ago through an- You submitted these questions a while ago. <laughs> Instagram poll or question box. And so I took them all and I asked a sex expert for her best advice to all of these questions. And her answers 
were so amazing, so freeing, so helpful, and just like, wow, completely changed my mind and perspective on so many things. If you want to join this session, plus nine other amazing... If you wanted to join this section... Uh, usually, usually, I don't think it's fair. I will laugh at something if it's funny, but I don't think it's generally fair to uh, overly critique someone for grammar and, and spelling and, and elocution. Um, but when you're selling an online course, I feel like it's a fair... You know, I feel like it's a justified thing to point out if you're not double checking that you're even writing correctly in your marketing, you know? Amazing sessions. You have to join the ultimate sex course for Christian women. This is the last week to register. Um, you can drop the heart emoji and I'll send you a link directly, but that's the only way to access this session plus all of the others. And yes, I brought on doctors, psychologists, sexologists, like all of the most amazing people to help us take all citation needed on those but also all with a very specific orthodox christian bias a deep dive into not only god's amazing design for sex and intimacy but also a lot of the practical aspects where like we don't always know how to ask maybe we feel too embarrassed or too ashamed to ask our questions <gasps> it's so funny that they all cut off at exactly a minute if we just look directly, back really quickly like, the shush bethany shush i'm trying to talk here she's interrupting me now it's rude these are really good questions these are genuinely really good questions to ask. They're open and heartfelt, and I wish everyone would feel free to ask this kind of question. I'm gutted that they're asking Girl Defined. This one is the most interesting for me. For Christian married couples, how to know the line of what's okay and what's not. What does that mean? Because uh, as far as Girl Defined's teachings, we've got, well, no sex before marriage, and then when you're married it's fine. Is it going to be a case of like... Because the, the the way that they talk about these courses and sex and intimacy and how it's okay and you shouldn't be ashamed for having sexual feelings and God's design for intimacy makes it sound like they are not of the opinion that sex is purely for procreation, which, you know, you get in some uh, Mormon circles and things, you know, there's where people used to be like having sex through a hole in a sheet because it was not about feeling sexy or having a good time is purely about procreation, you know? So it sounds like they're not of that opinion. But then is that slightly contradictory to their other preachings? I don't know. I just think it's really interesting. Those are really great questions. There's one more minute video. Let's just enjoy this cutting off at a minute again, if nothing else, because I'm finding that really funny. Safe sex for marriage. Wait, wait, wait. That's the message many of us heard growing up. And then we get married and we're like, Okay, so is this what I waited all this time for? Sex can be so difficult and beautiful. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh my god, do we agree on that? Save sex for marriage, you wait your whole life and then you get there and you're like, I get, I just sort of, I, I guess I lie here and he puts it in, is, it, is this, it, what, what? This is what I, this isn't like in my sexy Christian erotic novels. <laughs> and challenging and confused. Sex can be challenging? <laughs> I'm thinking through scenarios in my head of in what situation sex would be uh, challenging. And all I can think of is those, you know, those silly like sex dice you get? Or, or there's like sex board games? <laughs> it's like spice up your sexual relationship by playing a board game and it's like lick ear. That's, that's immediately what I thought of. <laughs> using all at the same time and many of us just feel like where do i go for answers like where do i actually go for help <laughs> it's just saying sex is my mind is all over the fucking place it's just like sex can be confusing and we're like where do i go i'm like wow <laughs> there's you can go a couple of places it kind of depends on <laughs> the relationship like the thing is right the actual i mean we'll get to this when we have a quick look at the courses and what they entail the simple answer to any question on sex with your partner and intimacy and stuff like that is c communication. Communicate. Tell your partner what you like and what feels good. And this is, again, this is, can be where it's tricky if you wait your whole life and then suddenly it's the wedding night and the honeymoon. You You might not know what feels good and so it is more confusing and difficult and scary because you're figuring everything out at once and again there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you choose but it makes it even more important to just communicate
number one piece of advice I would personally give ever is just communicate because you can give all this intimate advice about God's design and and this and that and how to do things and but it's completely personal right it's your personal tastes and your partner's personal tastes and this is again part of why I think waiting till marriage is such a risk in my opinion because you don't know if you and your partner are going to be sexually compatible unless you do have an idea of what you like and communicate about that before marriage or you're both very open to trying different things i don't know communication it's like the only thing that really matters is is listening to your partner and being open and honest and not being embarrassed to tell them what you like and what you don't like i wouldn't recommend for example, finding those answers from an orthodox Christian paid online sex course. Maybe part of what they teach is to talk to your partner. I really hope so. Help. Fortunately, in the Christian community especially, there has been like a lot of silence around this issue, especially with women. And so a lot of married women feel I like agree. sex is more of a duty rather than a delight and something that they really... Oh my god, somebody get girl defined and the transformed wife into a debate on sex as a duty versus a delight uh obviously in this debate i'm team girl defined i love that i love that about there is this negative idea in the christian community of sex as a duty but it should be something to be enjoyed i do wonder how far that goes for bethany be all right on this course because it's all very well saying sex should be a delight rather than a duty but if your advice to women who aren't interested in sex is to have it anyway, then that is still framing it as a duty. Do you know what I mean? I'm just very interested in how far this viewpoint really extends practically. But on the surface, love it. Get in a fight with the transformed wife, please. I love this. really look forward to, and especially when it comes to like the childbearing years and having young kids, it's like sex just seems like an extra burden rather than something that energizes and that you look forward to. And I want to change all of this. I want to help us as Christian women enjoy, delight, get excited about sex. And that's why I've created the ultimate sex course for Christian women. I that as a description, I really like that. I, I think that sounds on the surface of it fantastic again i'm curious how it extends to women that are ace or have a low libido or maybe aren't sexually attracted to their partner because you know that's not really a consideration when you're getting into an orthodox christian marriage where you wait for sex but on the surface of it love that i brought together the best therapists doctors psychologists to bring this course to you that actually ended relatively well as well it didn't cut off or anything that was that was the best advert so far we've seen for it. So this is the website. These are hosted on bethanybeal.com, I believe it is Bethany's website. Um, let's just have a look through the little it's like a little PDF guide. It's uh, very aesthetically made. So this is these are the sessions. There's 10 sessions. This is the ultimate sex course for singles. Single, sexual, and ready for marriage. It's not really many clues or hints as to what that's about. Understanding my sexuality and sex drive. Sex and intimacy through a biblical lens. Finding healing and wholeness from past wounds, no idea. Freedom, this is the most interesting one to me. Freedom from porn, erotica, and masturbation. Again, if you're single and you're waiting till marriage, kind of feels like those things are the only way you're going to be able to understand anything about your own sexuality. Not that you should get your education on sexuality from porn and erotica, but knowing what you like, knowing what turns you on has got to come from somewhere. And again, if you save that all for the wedding night, you don't know if you're, and this leads on to the next one, compatible, say with your partner. Compatibility, virginity, <laughs> made up concept. I don't know what they're going to say about it. Hopefully they say it's not really a thing. There is still this idea. Oh, I don't need these anymore. There is still this idea in a lot of Orthodox Christian communities and Orthodox religious communities in general that sex is supposed to be painful the first time, that there is meant to be blood, things like that, that are just so untrue. This idea of breaking the hymen 
as like a permanent thing that is supposed to happen the first time you have sex. All of these dangerous, untrue, super outdated ideas of sex and virginity, because all those things exist in orthodox Christian communities, it makes me nervous that that is a talking point in the Girl Defined one. Hopefully, what they'd be doing is maybe debunking some of that, maybe countering some of those harmful opinions, because this does seem to be a a women first, no shame, no guilt kind of thing, so fingers crossed. Single and surviving, or single and thriving? I guess it's just about being happy being single? I don't know. Managing your cycle, hormones and fertility, that's pretty self-explanatory. Girl Defined, I believe, are a, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think from my previous experiences of them, specifically in the podcast episode, I believe they are like no birth control, just, you know, track your cycle. Sex questions single women are too afraid to ask, and what if I never get married or have sex? I'm Bethany. I've been passionate about God's design for sex and sexuality for years now. Stick with me as we work through 10 mind-blowing sessions on sex, singleness, and intimacy. Bethany. Kiss, kiss. Okay, here are our instructors. Dr. Julie Slattery, a clinical psychologist, author, speaker, and the president slash co-founder of Authentic Intimacy. Okay, let's look this lady up. She has a weekly podcast, a lot of books about God and... Uh, God and sex, God and marriage. I was kind of hoping she had like a Wikipedia page or something. She doesn't. Not that different from uh, other guests that Girl Defined have had on. Christian author who is also interested in sex and intimacy from a biblical perspective. Okay, Dr. Joy Skarka. Dr. Joy Skarka is passionate about creating spaces to free women from sexual shame. She's the director of Disi- director of discipleship for Authentic Intimacy. Are these these aren't all from Authentic Intimacy, are they? No, they're not. Oh, Kristen is written. <laughs> Kristen is one of the. Um, Dr. Joyce Garker. I coach and teach Christian leaders how to help women find freedom from sexual shame and pornography. Freedom from shame, but also you're not allowed to watch porn. Carissa King, the founder of Dear Young Married Couple with her husband and they work as a therapist coach team. That doesn't sound super promising. Wife of a king. So she's a licensed marriage and family therapist and a counselling professor. Okay. And then, Kristen! We know Kristen. She's the other half of Girl Defined. Rebecca Gill is another Girl Defined friend. And then Bethany Beal herself. I love that they've put themselves in here as like the experts teaching the course. (laughs) Do I need Facebook? There's a Facebook community that you get to join. $169 for the ultimate sex course. There's really not very much information before you pay $169 or £136 to buy this course. Like, you would kind of hope you'd get a little bit more insight into what you're going to cover. I guess you get the titles, but really doesn't give anything away. Okay, let's have a look at the sex course for marrieds. The ultimate sex course for Christian women. It's the same price. Oh, Scott, wow, look at this. This is like the cover of an erotic novel, even though erotica is supposed to be bad. I feel like, this is just a blind guess, but I feel like probably one of the biggest groups that, um, like one of the biggest customers for erotic novels are Christian women who wait till marriage. I bet, because what else have you got? Okay, sessions. I'm, I'm also super curious as to how different these two things are from each other and whether it's different experts, so we'll see. God's beautiful design for your sexuality, same as the other course. The depths of female pleasure. (sighs) Making sense of orgasm. You're not allowed to... This is fun because this is... This is... Seems more directly exploring the physical aspects of sex. It's almost like you're not allowed to delve into that in a singles course because you're not married yet. So you might get some ideas. You've got to wait until you're married and then you buy this course and then you're allowed to learn about orgasm and things. Take control of your sexuality. Grow your desire. The true path towards a spicy bedroom. The dice. They're going to recommend those dice. I just know it. (laughs) Overcoming sexual hurt, addiction and struggle sounds very similar to the singles course. Pregnancy, postpartum, and body image insecurity. I can see that being quite a nice one. Sexual intimacy during infertility. That's very specific, but I'm sure that will be helpful for some people. 
Questions women are too afraid to ask about sex. That sounds the same as the other one. Should you see a sex therapist? I'm, my guess is their answer is going to be yes, but they should be a Christian sex therapist. That would be my guess. Bonus session for the engaged gals. Preparing for a great honeymoon. They are for blow if these girls haven't read some erotica. The way they're talking about and picturing the honeymoon as like a sex fest that you've got to get ready for. I need to read this course. I need to I need to um view this course, read up and learn all about sex before my honeymoon, so I'm ready to go absolutely ape shit. <laughs> Bonnie Burns. Oh, they are different experts. Look at that. Bonnie is the author of Unlock Your Orgasm and founder of Strong Wives. Bonnie works to empower the wife with low sexual interest. Empower the wife who has low sexual interest. I'm guessing this is means not empower you with low interest, little sex drive and possibly a sexless marriage through science, scripture, and stories. I can see that being helpful for a lot of people. It's kind of a funny line to tread, right? Because some people just have a low sex drive. Naturally, that's just how they are. That's just who they are. Some people have a low sex drive as a result of medical things that can be resolved, as a result of trauma that can be overcome. You know, that there is science and therapy and stories that can help people to improve their sex drives. At the same time, there are some people who just have a low sex drive and, you know, might be reading things like this and watching videos and interviews with experts like this being like, I've tried all of these things and nothing is working. Is something wrong with me? So it's kind of a fine line to tread. I think the my way of dealing with that would be go ahead with that you know, education and instruction on the science and the stories with the acknowledgement that some people might just have a low sex drive and that is okay. And that way you don't alienate people who just are different. Dr. Jennifer Delga. Oh, shall I look up Bonnie Burns? Let's look up Bonnie Burns. I mean, it seems pretty uh, self-explanatory who she is. Let's have a quick look at her company, shall we? Strong Wives. Welcome to the sisterhood no one wants to join. Strong, ri strong wives, rise above the plague of pornography. The plague of pornography. She's got her own coaching and classes, of course. These women must make a fucking mint. Whether you have discovered pornography or other types of sexual betrayal. Oh, so this isn't... This isn't... If you have discovered pornography, this is because men watch pornography, women don't. It's funny that they define pornography and erotica differently, even though erotica is just pornography more consumed by women. <laughs> if you've discovered your spouse using pornography, you may be hurt and betrayed. This is extremely specific. How do you navigate the fury, the fury and agony of newly found betrayal from porn use? Agony and fury at your partner viewing porn. I get, if, if you had a certain understanding in your relationship and they had a secret porn addiction, then I can understand there being some betrayal. But that does feel like an overreaction, right? This is all specific to finding your partner betraying you using pornography. The site offers support through coaching for women wounded by sexual betrayal. It's so bizarre that the, uh, the, the focus of all of the main page seems to be on finding your partner using porn and not your partner cheating on you. Almost like finding them watching pornography is worse. Okay, well, that's, um, that's Bonnie. That was weird. Dr. Jennifer Degler. Psychologist, life coach, author, speaker, wife, and mom. She is passionate about helping people create healthy, successful relationships. Let's just have a quick look. Dr. Jennifer. She's got her own ministry. These women all have their own ministries where they sell courses and products and it's fine it's just kind of funny spice up your sex life with dares of the month did that say dares of the month was i like so right about the whole dice board game sex thing gift ideas strawberry lube candle valentine thong or panties cookies she's got a what's marriedance.com is this video gonna get demonetized a christian sex toy store well that's delightful look at that so, I mean, maybe don't look at that. I don't think I can show any of this. Well, look at that. I've just learned that Christian sex toy stores are a thing. Isn't that fantastic? Love that. Each one of you draws one day of the week tile and places it on your tile rack. This is the day you are responsible for initiating a sexual encounter. <laughs> a 
my god, these examples of Scrabble letters. If you <laughs> if you drew these Scrabble letters, fondly caress under your shirt. Warmly caress your right knee under the covers at night. <laughs> okay, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. Okay. I like Jennifer. <laughs> Dr. Leah Gordon, I think Girl Defined have interviewed her before. Naturopathic and functional medicine doctor. Yes, we've looked at her before. She's a naturopath. She's like a, a an alternative medicine fertility person. Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill. I think we might have seen them talk to Dr. Glenn before as well. Or Phyllis. I don't remember. He's a clinical sexologist, but his greatest credential is a 40-year marriage with Phyllis and what they experienced together. God, there's loads of experts in this one. Joy Skarka, she was in the other one. Tish has special training in neuroscience-informed trauma healing, Christian sex therapy, and couples therapy. Okay, fine, and there's Joy. Morgan, of Paul and Morgan. If you don't know Paul and Morgan, honestly, your life is probably better off. Francie, Francie Winslow, founder of the wildly popular podcast Heaven in Your Home. She unpacks God's heart on sex, marriage, and his mission on the earth. Intimacy was God's idea in the beginning. There you go, that's Bethany Beale's sex courses. Ultimate sex courses. I guess these are the last sex courses ever. Ha ha ha. For Christian women, both single and married. Or engaged. Engaged women are allowed to watch the marriage course. So they can prepare for their honeymoon. It's just very bizarre. There's a lot of really thoughtful, positive ideas, limiting shame and stuff like that, with a sort of what I view as a slightly hypocritical or maybe it's just complete blinders because they've always been brought up in this world, blinders to the fact that a lot of what they're teaching is what causes the shame and the guilt. So at the very least, there are a range of experts that are genuinely trained in the areas that they're teaching in. Again, they're all coming from a very specifically biased point of view, but if you share Bethany's worldview, if you also think pornography is evil and you can't have sex until the night of your wedding and so on, then I can see this hopefully being helpful for most people? Very bizarre. Do let me know what your thoughts are down below. I don't know if this video will manage to be monetized, so maybe consider giving it a like and a share. If you like what I do here and you would like to see more, you can become a channel member for comment priority and some very silly emotes. The best way to support this channel is via the Patreon. You get some exclusive videos, posts, early merch updates, discounts, things like that. If you would like to see more vibey, vloggy lifestyle content from me, you can check out Emma Thorne backstage. If you like either my nonsense voice in the background or watching gaming content, you can follow me at Little Duck Gaming for lots of silly adventures over there. I am also live on Twitch, usually three times a week. For the duration of the Christmas season, I will be live sometimes when I can be. Either way, you can follow me on Twitch at Emma Little Duck. I would like to give a big old thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and most importantly, have yourselves a very lovely week. I will see you really soon. Sex dice.